We are heading into a very significant time for the global church. And we are going to have a lot of training ground to practice not returning evil actions with evil actions. We're gonna have a lot of training ground like we work with our children and how to be good winners and good losers. And we're gonna work on how to even change the rules of the game so that it's not defined as us versus them and winning versus losing. There's a lot of work that we have ahead of us. And the only way that we are going to be able to do it is with God's power in us and working through us and guiding us. Because God does give us more than we can handle if we try to handle it alone. And so we are going to have a training ground of the church for how we go through a really hard, a really conflicted time in God's love, with God's covenant written and engraved in our hearts so that it guides and leads us in absolutely everything that we do, so that we are able to live at peace with all of those around us. And I love Paul's passage in that because he's practical about it as well. That whole call to live in peace comes with the first disclaimer, insofar as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. There are going to be times when people don't choose peace. There are going to be times when people do harm. And the hardest thing for us is going to be using those moments as moments where we develop our own spiritual fruit of generosity and of self-control. Because the thing is, we don't know what battle that other person is fighting and why their margin is so thin that they just can't take one more step towards love, that they crumble to pieces. But God does. And we who have been harmed and hurt and are in a place where we just can't extend any more love to the people harming us, that's okay as long as we know that God still loves them and God is still able to extend the love that they need and that we give space to honor that need and get out of the way so that God's love can get there. There are many denominations who have been through this process and who have been through schism. Not only is it going to be an internal process, but it is going to be a process where the world watches us. And so it is going to be more important now than ever that we model what it means to be a follower of Christ that we do this conflict in the fullness of God's love, no matter what the outcome. That we extend and respond in goodness and leave room for God to respond in a vengeance. Because that is not up to us, because we don't have the full picture. And if we give that space, then we give the Holy Spirit more room to work to bring about the peace and the love that we all want. We are in red today for this covenant service because we don't do this on our own. It is only through the Holy Spirit's power bringing the love of God and Christ to us. And so we enter this liturgy today knowing how important it is. When we come to the invitation, these are the words that John Wesley used in the Methodist Church back in 1780. The fact that there is conflict in our church is nothing new. There has been conflict as long as we have been here, and we'll look at a couple of those next week and the week after, and the conflict over women's ordinations and the fact that I am standing before you now, a conflict that the church went through without schisming, and the conflict over racism, over slavery, and the fact that there was a schism in our church around that that was then remerged and brought together again. And we'll be looking at this process and how we do it. And above all, we will be doing it together and we will be doing it in God's love. May we begin the Methodist covenant service. If you would take your bulletins or follow along in the screen. And would you join me in the opening prayer? Oh God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace, 
and to enter anew into covenant with you. Reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We begin this moment in thankfulness because what any situation of conflict does is narrow our field to focus only on what is wrong. And so part of our spiritual discipline and practice is to widen that focus every day and to begin with also giving thanks for what is going on that is right and good. So let us give thanks for all of God's mercies. O oh God, our covenant friend, you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. We praise your holy name, O oh God. You have given us life and reason and set us in a world filled with your glory. You have comforted us with family and friends and ministered to us through the hands of our sisters and brothers. We praise your holy name, O oh God. You have filled our hearts with a hunger after you and have given us your peace. You have redeemed us and called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have given us a place in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit and the witness of your church. We praise your holy name, O oh God. You have been our light in darkness and a rock of strength in adversity and temptation. You have been the very spirit of joy in our joys and the all-sufficient reward in all our labors. We praise your holy name, O oh God. You remembered us when we forgot you. You followed us even when we tried to flee from you. You met us with forgiveness when we returned to you. For all your patience and overflowing grace, we praise your holy name, O oh God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted to the new covenant, which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. And on the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we affirm the baptismal covenant that's coming next week, and gather at the Lord's table coming today. Today, however, we meet as the generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. The words from 1780. We stand in the tradition and in the legacy and in the faith of all our foremothers and forefathers. It is my humble honor to ask that we commit ourselves to Christ as his servants, that we give ourselves to him that we may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable and others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests, and others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ and pray. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. May we be satisfied that Christ shall give us our place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the savior of none but his servants. 
He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these admonitions. First, set apart some time, more than once, to be spent alone before the Lord in seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you. In carefully thinking through all the conditions of the covenant and searching your hearts whether you have already freely given your life to Christ, consider what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are, and whether you, after having fully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. You have opened your mouths to the Lord, and you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. And last, be then prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall down on your knees, lift your hands toward heaven, open your hearts to the Lord. Take a moment of silence to follow these steps, and then kneeling or bowing as you feel led, we will together share the covenant prayer. Would you join me in prayer? O righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that we shall put away all our idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart, renounce them all, covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch all temptations that lead me away from you. For my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be our God again, if we would let him. Before all heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body and soul, as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means of coming to God. Jesus, I do here on bended knees accept Christ as the only new and living way and sincerely join myself in covenant with him. 
O blessed Jesus, I come to you, hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. I do here with all my power accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own worthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do hear covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death shall part me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of our lives. I do here willingly put my neck under your yoke to carry your burden. All our laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction and not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows our hearts. God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without guile or reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide me and help me to set it all right. And now, glory be to you, O God the Father, whom I from this day forward shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory be to you, O God the Son, who has loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood and now is my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power has turned my heart from sin to God. O mighty God, the Lord Omnipotent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it and let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. <laughs> 